What's up guys, this is Steve for Android at Night, and today what I've got for you is my favourite root apps for Android. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using my old Nexus 5. The first app on this list is, as it says, very, very basic. This is Root Checker Basic, and all this will do is let you know whether your phone is rooted or not. This is a question I get a lot. People root their phone, they see the super user is installed, yeah, they're not quite sure whether they've done anything properly. This is a really easy way to check that you have root access. Next up, we have Exposed Installer. Now, this is probably my favorite root app of all of them out there. This lets you download modules from a huge repository online, and the possibilities of these are literally pretty much endless. Basically, anything you can do on a custom ROM, as far as customization goes, you should be able to do through an Exposed module. So two of the ones I've installed are Gravity Box, which gives you a bunch of different customization options, and, and the one above, which gives you a Motorola-like ambient display on your Nexus 5. The other two, you can see Amplify and Greenify, are actually two more apps I'm going to be talking about in this video, but they plug into the Exposed framework and it gives them a little bit of extra functionality. Next up we have Greenify, which will hibernate applications and prevent them waking up your phone from states of sleep. Basically what this does is blocks wake clocks, and wake clocks are the main cause of battery drain on Android. I haven't got many applications installed on my Nexus 5 at the moment um, because I'm about to update it to 6.0. But if I had more applications, I'd have stuff like Facebook hibernated, um, things that you don't need to get instant messages from, and it really does work well to save you a little bit of extra battery. So for example, I can hit Android Firewall Plus here, hit the little tick button and it will hibernate it, and you can always go ahead and remove it at the top. Next up we have Adaway, which is pretty consistently voted the best ad blocking application on Android. Unfortunately it's not on the Play Store, so you need to go to the link in the description and install it as a sideloaded APK. Once it's installed, you can hit the button here and it will download the files and apply ad blocking to your device. And boom, you are now blocking all the adverts on your Android phone. On top of all the DNS ad blocking, there is also an option which will let you scan for adware. Adware being the sort of applications that when you install them, they send you like pop-up notifications and notifications to your status bar. Adway is unable to block these, but this will give you the option to uninstall them and to scan for them as well. Next up, we've got AppOps Installer, and this gives you the ability to manually change the permissions for different applications. This is very much like what is now stock in Android 6.0, but if you're running an older version of Android, this will allow you to manually tweak with permissions. So for example, if you don't want Facebook to be able to see your location, you can specifically turn that off. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on Android 5.1 on my Nexus 5 at the moment, but I've used this a lot in the past and it's definitely one of my favorite root apps. Next up, we have Android Firewall Plus, and this will allow you to create a firewall for different applications so they cannot access your network. This is great if you're out and about and you don't want to be using up all of your data. You can either block applications completely or you can make it so you, they can only access data when you're on Wi-Fi. Next up, we've got Flashify, which is a great little app if you've just rooted your phone and you want to get, say, a boot image, a recovery, or you want to flash a zip. You can hit recovery images here and you can automatically download and install any of the custom recoveries you could choose. So you've got TWRP, Clockwork Mod Recovery, Phil's Recovery and a stock Android one at the bottom. Down at the top you've also got a couple of different boot images and these will allow you to install the Franco kernel or the stock kernel. And then at the bottom you've got the option to download gapps and if you guys run custom ROMs you know a lot of custom ROMs don't have the gapps package. Um, sort of automatically with them, you have to download that and sideload it. And if you scroll to the side, you've also got the option to back up your current kernel and back up your current recovery. And if you hit the plus button at the top here, you get the option to add a list of commands. So if you've got a custom recovery installed, you can do stuff like install zips, wipe your cache, wipe your Dalbit cache, your data, backup and restore. These are the sort of things you would normally do inside of a recovery and this just allows you to do it um, within an app straight on your phone. Next up we have ROM Toolbox and this is really useful if you're planning on installing custom ROMs on your phone. You've got an option at the top which is the ROM installer. This will give you a list of the most popular ROMs for your specific phone. It's also got options to backup and restore your ROM. You can flash a custom recovery and you can install the ROM and you can also make it so it will automatically install updates. As well as the ROM options, you've got an app manager. This will allow you to back up all of your applications and restore them. It will also allow you to freeze applications and you can make it so it will back up automatically at certain times on certain days. There is also a root browser which will allow you to edit stuff um, on a root level on your SD card and your internal SD card. You can also run Linux scripts through a scripter and terminal emulator and you've also got some options to change your DNS, decide which applications start on boot. If you've got an SD card, you can configure apps to SD through this app. And there's even an option at the bottom which will allow you to reboot 
um, into all your different modes. Then if you scroll across, there's even more stuff. You've got some CPU controls and kernel tweaks. You can also edit your build prop, the very highly tweaked task manager, and also an SD card booster. This is one of those apps that really could do with its own standalone video. So if you guys want to see a video or actually go through all of these um, little features in detail, then let me know in the comments below. Next up we have Stick Mount, and this is pretty specific for um, Nexus devices. I think it does work on a few other Samsung devices as well, but don't quote me on that. This will allow you to access USB sticks using an on-the-go cable, so you can drag stuff to them, drag stuff off them. Um, it gives you another little option um, as far as expandable memory goes. We've all been in that situation where you've accidentally deleted um, an important picture or a document from your phone and it is seemingly irrecoverable. Disk Digger will allow you to restore files on your SD card that you've deleted. So you get a list here of all your different partitions. I'm going to hit the top one as this is my main SD card partition. You can then scroll down through the options here and choose which sort of file you're looking for. So say you've accidentally deleted JPEG, you can hit JPEG hit OK and this will then scan through all of your SD card. It does take a little bit of time but this will pull up all the little residual files which remain on an SD card even when it is wiped. Next up we have Titanium Backup and this has actually become pretty ubiquitous as far as backup apps go. Backing up all of your apps is becoming less and less necessary as Android evolves. I think in 6.0 it's going to be rendered almost useless but that is also going to depend on whether you're flashing lots and lots of custom ROMs. If you want to be able to backup all of your data in your applications then Titanium Backup is still the best way to do this I think. It's been around for, is it five years? It's been around for a while but it's a really nice way of backing stuff up and if you get the pro version you can back stuff up to cloud storage and it has a scheduler which will allow you to set a specific time and your phone will automatically back up all of your applications and all of your app data. Next up we have Root Explorer and this is pretty consistently voted the best file manager for rooted Android phones. It lets you go to a root level on your device and mess around with files you would otherwise be unable to see. Like a lot of these root apps, it isn't the prettiest in the world but it does do the job very nicely. I hope you enjoyed that guys. Please let me know in the comments below which root app you're using. You can follow me on all my social media things, the links in the description. Please go ahead and give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. You can also subscribe if you haven't seen me before. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.